time of worship. Good to see everybody. It's the last day of the year. And thank God that you ain't on this Sunday. Amen. Jesus is on the main line.
that we will take home and we will listen to it in our heart and be 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 doers of the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Good morning, St. John. Good morning. Glad to see everyone today. First, I want to recognize our visitors. Any visitors that would like to stay in or say the word? Neither shall your 
our veins vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, said the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call ye blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, said the Lord of hosts. At this time, the deacon and the usher will come at this time. And also, remember that God loves a cheerful giver.
pray, Father. Amen.
But the record is that early that Sunday morning, he got up with all power. So we want to say thank you. Thank you, Master. In the name of Jesus. And then when we go into your word today, oh, I pray that you strip me of self and allow the Holy Spirit to come forth and take control. I, I just want to say what you told me to say. Thank you, Master. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Indeed, it is a blessing. Amen. Amen. To see us here at St. John. Amen. Sister Mack and Brother Simmons. Amen. Sister Delaney. And the ones who have been sick. Amen. Amen. Sister Morrow. We want to make sure that we all pray for one another. Amen. Amen. There is a word. Come from the Lord. Amen. If you will turn your Bibles to Romans 7. Yeah. Romans 7. Yeah. When you get to Romans 7, Amen. look at verses 18 and 19. Brother Boo is at his sister law's funeral today. Amen. Amen. And he wanted us to let everyone know that he was praying with us. Amen. Amen. So we look at Romans 7. And if you look at verse 18, Amen. and when you get there, it said, For I know. Y'all see that? Yes, For I know that in me, mm -hmm. that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Uh -huh. right. yeah. For to will mm -hmm. is present with me. Mm -hmm. And watch what he said. He said, but mm -hmm. oh. how to perform that which is good I find not. Ain't that saying something? I want to read that again. He said, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. Look at the next verse. For the good that I would do not but the evil which I would not, that which I do. Amen. Now turn your Bibles real fast to 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. There is a word from God. Let me know when you're there. When you get there, you ought to read, you ought to see this. He said, Therefore, uh -huh. yeah. if any man be in Christ, yeah. he is a new creature. Uh -huh. All things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. Uh -huh. Now, flip over to second, flip back to second Corinthians 4 16. 2 Corinthians 4 and 16. We there? When you get there, you ought to see these words. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, y'all see that? Yet the inward man is renewed, what is that? Day by day. Amen. Thank you. I want to tag this, this 
this morning, I don't need a new year. I need a new me. I don't need a new year. I need a new me. Thank you, ushers. When we were much young, we used to be really excited about the new year. Are you with me? And for a second, perhaps some of you still are. Uh -huh. I mean, after all, it's a time when everybody is on the same page. Are you with me? Yes, we are all thinking about making a first start. We are all thinking about starting all over again. We are all thinking about setting goals and making this new year better than last year. Are you with me, church? But I, I got to thinking about this, brother Sanders. When we all doing the same thing this time last year yeah, yeah. and the year before and the year before that, haven't we all been doing the same thing every year for as long as we can remember? We say that we are going to change our lives. But at the end of the year, things are still the same. Perhaps the reason some of us are not as excited about the new year as we used to be is because we have lived long enough to experience disappointments yes, yes. of a countless new year's resolution that never was kept. Amen. And for no matter how excited we were and no matter how good our intentions were, no matter how determined we were, but by the middle of January, and if not then, certainly by Valentine's Day, the thrill, the excitement, the termination, the resolve that was present on New Year's Eve and on New Year's Day, it was long gone. Help me somebody. You see, you see, some of us are not particularly excited about New Year's because we have discovered the resolve that was present on New Year's Eve and on New Year's Day was long gone. Some of us are not particularly excited about the New Year because we have discovered this. That what is needed is not a new year, but rather a new person. Right. Are you with me? You, you know what? We, we might well tell the truth. Because soon or later, all of us are going to have to give an account. For the things that we have done. And, and let me remind you just a second. By this time now, we ought to be getting a little bit closer to God. If you read your Sunday school lesson and where we come from,
cross to where we are right now and we can accept Christ as our personal Savior. Some of us ought to be a little bit better now than what we was before. You see, this is exactly the experience that the Apostle Paul shares with us in the Roman text. Now, we look at Paul's experience, and, and, and I would like to suggest to you that Paul is not relating a pre conversation, I um, mean, conversion experience, but rather this was not, this was a post conversion of Paul's experience. You see, some think what Paul shared in Romans 7 is the struggle he experienced before he was saved. But a careful look at the text will provide otherwise. Amen. And let me prove to you my point. First of all, when we look at the grammatical structure of the text, we, we know that Paul did not use the imperfect uh, 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 tense to describe this ordeal, but rather he constantly uses the present tense. Are you with me, church? In other words, Paul is describing what he used to. Paul is describing not what he used to go through. He's talking about the struggles that he uh, presently experiencing. Amen? And, and, and just like we said before, by this time, by this time, and secondly, the person who is not saved, y'all got to stay with me on this, the person who is saved, Let me do it this way. The person who is not saved has no real struggles with trying to do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. Did, did y'all catch that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. that that's, that's, why, that's why you got to be careful of who you hook up with. You, you got to be careful of who you hang around with. Because some folks ain't right and some folks ain't gonna get right. You mess with them, you won't be right. Doing wrong to them is so natural that doing right doesn't even cross their mind. Help me hold the spirit. Now, there are some who would appeal to the fact of the conscience. But even the conscience of an unsaved person doesn't want to do right. Are you with me, Jeff? That's why your mom and your father used to tell you all that, Lewis, better watch out who you hang around with because that boy, that girl, ain't no good. Because they ain't seen some things, they know some things, they know what you want. And the reason why they're telling you because they know. Are you with me, Trey? Watch this. Proverbs 14 and 2. It said that there is a way that seems right to man. You hear that? It's that seem right to man, but the end there are of the ways of what? Death. The way of this sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus. Then Paul goes on later and, and he said, he said the same letter in the eight, Romans 8 and 5. He said, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Sometimes in this prison life, we ought to learn how to walk by the spirit. We ought to learn how to be with the spirit. We ought to learn to do what the Lord is telling us to do. You can't do it on your own. And we have to put this in our minds, our heart. We cannot do this on our own. In that same passage of scripture, you look at that 
sixth verse, when Paul talks about him, he said, for to be carnal minded is death. But to be spiritual minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. But it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So what are you saying, Lewis? What I am saying to us this morning, that the flesh, the flesh cannot and will not please God. That's why the Bible tells us over in Hebrew 11 and 6, it said, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. But he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rock with water to them that diligently seek him. That diligently seek him. Church seeks. That's why, that's, that's why the church don't grow like it should be growing. That's why when we see things going on in this world, when wars is going on, and rumors of wars, fires in the west and the east, and snow and earthquake everywhere, it, it, it ought to be a point in our life and our mind where we all want to change. If you had the word of God and you studied the word of God, then you ought to want to change. Then Paul said, he said, I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Now, the flesh that Paul is referring to is not the physical body, but rather the ungener unregenerated sin nature that was present within him. See, it's some sin that works on the inside of us and Satan want to put it down. He do not want you to do things what God wants you to do. One of the purpose of God's spirit within us is to empower us to bring our sinful nature under control. Let me tell you something. If it wasn't for God working on the inside of us, we'll still be doing the same thing that we did when we were saved 20 or 30 years ago. Can I help somebody tonight? And the reason why is simply because of the fact that the grass always looked green on the other side. Got green grass back at the house. <laughs> but there's some reason that that, that grass start looking green huh? on the other side. I, I tell somebody sometimes uh, you got to go on to the other side, and sometimes you got to get back. And then sometimes you might not make it back. For the desire of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desire of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to one another to keep you from doing the things you want to do. Oh, we want to do right. That's, that's why. That's why Paul said. That he died daily. He died daily. When we wake up in the morning, you got to put that self behind you. Because when you get up and start moving, it's coming towards you. It's coming towards you. It's going to come to you on the telephone or whatever. Every day, the flesh, the sinful nation had to be crucified. Crucifying the flesh is not something that God does for us. We have to do it ourselves by the power of his spirit 
that dwell within us. When we are saved, the spirit comes on the inside and it takes control and it starts working in our lives if the spirit don't if the spirit don't come in, perhaps you need to check on your salvation. Therefore, Paul, he, he goes on and said, there is a struggle that is going on within me. Look, don't be looking at nobody else. Look at me. Look at yourself. We, we want to change everybody but ourselves. The will to do is present, present within me. Listen to me. First of the year, I want to lose weight. Are you with me? I want to come to Sunday school every Sunday. Are you with me? Right. I want to become active in church. See, it's a difference in just coming to church and being active in the church. When, when, when God gives you a talent, then you ought to know how to use it. If God gives you a talent, then he's going to use that talent, allow the spirit to use that talent on the inside of you. Ain't no need to come up here and sit down and act like ain't nothing that ever happened to us. I want to be more than just a bench member. I really want to the wilderness this time. But the high to the act of doing it is absent. We get worried about what other folks don't say. Ain't that something? You've been in the church 30 years and you worried about what somebody else is going to say. Mm. Not only do I struggle to do things that I want to do, but the things I don't want to do seems to overpower me. Preach this thing, really. In other words, oh, hey, this new year, we, we can talk about this. Here. I eat too many napalms. I eat too much pork. Y'all know who I'm talking about. I ain't talking this to myself. I, I eat too much and I don't exercise enough. No, you ain't gonna exercise because you done ate too much. When you, when you eat too much, you don't want to do nothing else. You don't want nobody else messing with you. Because you done ate too much. I talk about folks. What? Well, watch this here. I talk about folks rather than praying for the folks. And we call ourselves church people. But we don't know how to pray for one another. Oh, sometimes I, I don't even like myself. Have you ever been there? Uh, you know how it is sometimes. You, you know that you're not doing right. And you know that you're not acting right. You know you don't love your brother and your sister right. But we still keep doing the same old thing. That's why, that, that's why sometimes we don't get excited about the new year. Unless I do things differently, this new year is going to be just like this year and last year and the year before because we don't want to change. We don't want to change. I'm telling you, we do not want to change. I start right at the pulpit. And I work my way all the way everywhere in the church. We want to keep doing the same thing. So I don't need no new year. And a lot of folks don't need 
no new year, they be just a, a new man. Before we get all depressed and give up on our hope, there's some good news. Paul says that though it is a struggle, there's an answer to our dilemma. The answer is found in Christ. He said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Do you hear that? All things have passed away, and behold, all things become new. Yes, that's the secret to the success of a new year. In other words, what he's telling us, he's telling each and every one of us, is that you must be, you got to be in Christ. You got to be in Christ. So, preacher, what does it mean to be in Christ? The term in Christ was a favorite expression. A power that was used over 70 something times in his writing. It refers to the status and a position. It's a good place to be. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Because when you are in Christ, let me remind you, God will keep you. He will provide for you. He will protect you. He'll take care of you. And you don't have to worry about your enemies. Yeah. Yeah. Resist the devil. And he'll flee from you. For a season. We are sanctified in Christ. We are the children of God by faith in Christ. When you are in Christ, you got something. You have something that nobody can take away from you when you have Christ on the inside of you. It don't matter. It don't matter what your children say. It don't matter what nobody says. It don't matter what the deacons say. No matter what the others say. When you have something, when you have Christ in you, you got something. The Bible says that the dead shall rise in Christ first. So everything that we need is in Christ. So if we abide in him and his word abides in us we can ask whatever we want to ask and it's going to be given to us. Right? And Christ is a good place to be. Paul says in the text that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Listen to me. That is, if you are in Christ, you are a new you. If you are a new you, you don't really need a new year to start something new. If we catch that church, well, I heard Paul say on another case, Though the outward man is perishing, the inward man is being renewed day by day. I don't care what I go through. You, you ought to tell everybody, I don't care what you go through this week. You still got God on the inside of you. You can do whatever you want to do. Do you see that? Oh, I got to get out of here. But I heard somebody saying, the other day. He said, weeping may endure for a night. But he said, uh, that joy is coming in the morning. Can I get a witness? And I used to hear uh, the choir singing. Trouble may come my way today. But trouble don't last always. Can I get a witness? And I don't know you this morning, but I'm glad I've been redeemed with the blood of Jesus. Can I get a witness? I'm glad I've been bought with a price. 
Am I right, everybody? And my grandmama used to tell me, she used to say it a long time ago, that he may not come when you want him to, but he's always on time. Every morning when I wake up, brother, I find myself not dead. That's like a New Year's day to me. And I'm right around it up. In the morning when I wake up, and I get out of bed and I put my clothes on for myself, I find that it's a New Year's day. I'm out right about it. I'm trying to get out of here, but I found out that he'll make a way out of no way. He'll fix whatever is broken. He will mend all the broken pieces. Am I right about it? I got to close this thing. I remember church. I remember a man by the name of Jesus. Anybody know Jesus? I don't need a new year. I need a new me. Am I right about it? It was back over 2,000 years ago. There was a man that came out. His name was Jesus. And he carried the old rugged cross. Can you see him? A carried the old rugged cross. And he carried that rugged cross for you. And he carried it for me. Am I right about it? When they got him up to the top, they stretched him wide. They put they put nails in his feet. And I get the women, they pierced him in the side. Am I right about it? He never said a the word. He stayed up there until he gave up the Holy Ghost. Am I right about it? They laid him in a bar or two. He never said a word. Am I right about it? He laid there on Friday night. He laid there. Friday night, but early, early Sunday morning, before the break of day, he got up, did he get up, did he get up, and he tried him, what he walk with you, ain't he alright, ain't he alright, I tried him, he walked with me, I tried him, he talked with me, ain't he alright, ain't he alright, I need a new man. The doors of the church stands open. Christ already opened a long time ago.
with a friend that just didn't call for their brother. We thank it. 
it, it, it's, it, it's in our heart, but we thank it, but we don't do what we should do. Right. So I, I want to let you know that our prayers are with you. Amen. Brother Sam is the same thing for you. Amen. Our prayers are with you. Amen. We we think about Sister Sam so much. Amen. Amen. And, and Sister Lonnie and then Sister Morrow. We think about God. And we think about her so much. And, and anything else need to be said. This evening, six o'clock, we're having a program here at six o'clock. It's gonna start at six o'clock. Pastor Reese is gonna be doing a preach. Three choirs, three choirs, Parkview and uh, who else? Saint Paul. Saint Paul. Saint Paul. They they practice together. They sing together. They had practice together yesterday. And, 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 and Sister Rick was that. They all sing together. They gonna come over here and they gonna sing for us. And once we hear the singing, then we're gonna have the preaching. Amen. Amen. And I'm gonna tell you, St. John, I truly believe that it's gonna be a blessing for all of us here at St. John. Amen. It's gonna be a blessing here for us, St. John, because I can truly believe that that's gonna help pull us together. It's going to help pull us together. Amen. Amen. We done had got off track a little bit. Amen. But I truly believe that that's what's going to happen. And and, and uh, uh, it's going to be good. Uh, 5.30. Choir members need to be here at 5.30. Choir members need to be here at 5.30. And we're going to do that and then we're going to rotate this. And we're going to go from here to uh, St. Paul, the next one, and then uh, part of you, the next one, we're going to rotate it, and then we're going to end up with what's the name going to be coming in also uh, at uh, who, who? No, no. A Wings over, over at uh, the big church over there, Galilee. He's going to be in it. He's going to get in it also, so we're going to have a three or four or, uh, and you know what? Our choir, it's going to be hard to hold all of it now. Yeah, because the way they was packed in that other yesterday, it's going to be hard. So, 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 but my heel said, St. John, let us make sure that we come out, that we come out and be involved. And, and when I'm starting here, I, I'm not cutting no corners when I'm saying this here. I want to start with our deacons. Amen. Well, season and all y'all, deacons, we need to be here because the deacons are going to do devotion. Amen. And Brother Sims, you can get in there too. <laughs> Amen. And, and I, I want it to be good for us. And I'm going to tell y'all this, and I'm going. When they called me on the phone and they started asking about doing this, and I, I'm just telling you the way I feel. They wanted to have it at other churches. But I said, no. Let's have it at St. John. I said, I want St. John. I said, we want to be the host church. And, and that's what I said. I, I, I'm, I'm just telling you where everybody know. Uh, uh, that's where it started from. I, I, wanted, I didn't want to go nowhere else. I want to be right here at this church. Okay? Did that sound okay? If you don't, then you let the Lord whoop you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's be dismissed. Let's go. Let us make sure we pray for Reverend Boo. Reverend Boo won't be here next Sunday also. He's going to be preaching up in, I believe it's Gilbert. Amen. So, so nice. Good to see you. Amen. Let this world end if you can reach out and touch somebody listening to Lewis Lane. Let this world end play if you can. Eternal God, our Father, which art in heaven, God, we thank you for this blessed day. We thank you, God, for blessing our members and our visitors 
to be able to come back and be with us one more time. Yes, we pray, God, that not only do you just touch them and bless them, but bless their family in a mighty special way. Yes, be with them and give them strength. And we'll be so careful, so reminded to give you all the praises and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Would you please repeat these words after me? Much prayer, much, prayer, much, power, much power, little prayer, little, prayer, little, power, little power, no prayer, no, prayer, no, power. no power. Did I say that right? <laughs>